Okay. Okay, and uh, we are recording now, and I am going to quickly make sure that you have editing access on the Google Drive. I'm so sorry, everybody. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and introduce myself simultaneously uh, while, while doing that. I guess you are all automatically uh, on mute. So um, my name is Lillian Hogendorn. I am the, the Digital Access and Open Educational Resources uh, lead here at eCampus Ontario, um, and it is my privilege to get to host these um, these uh, community webinars every single um, month. Um, usually we hear from members of the community about what's going on with them, usually around a specific topic, and today's uh, theme is open in Ontario 2020-2021, or uh, that's a, just quite a, quite a mouthful. Um, so uh, today we're going to be talking uh, a little bit about um, about what's uh, going on with eCampus Ontario uh, in in 2020-21. So what our plans are specifically related to our open library, um, and what our what our, our plans are for the for the coming year. All right, you guys should now have added access to that document, um, and I will return to sharing my screen with you guys right now. Um, we're also going to get the chance to hear from some folks who you might see up at the at the at the top there. Um, we've got Jesslyn Wilkinson, Olga Perkovic, and uh, Kim Carter and Marie Rutherford here, uh, all who are going to share a little bit about the sort of beginnings or middles of projects that they're working on at their institution and hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration. And finally, um, we'll have a chance for spontaneous updates from you. So think about if you'd like to share something and we can we can unmute you uh, towards the end. But first, let's start with what we're up to. Um, so last year was an amazing year for open education in Ontario. And I just want to go over by the numbers some of the milestones that we hit this year uh, that we couldn't have done without you. So you guys know where we're starting from. Um, so in 2020, we finally hit $10 million of student savings in Ontario. That is almost quadrupling since the last year. Uh, it was over $7 million of uh, new reported savings this year. And we are so grateful to each and every one of you who takes the time to not only adapt or adopt an open resource or create something, but also to, you know, jump in and, and fill out a very brief form letting us know that you have. Um, we had 23,000 resources downloaded from our library. We had 80 new books or other resources added. And we have 39 out of 45 institutions in Ontario reporting using OER. So we're here to stay. Um, it's been an amazing year. Uh, Pressbooks, the web traffic is, is crazy. Um, we are so happy to have all of this energy. Um, but numbers aren't the only thing <laughs> that are highlights. Um, we launched this community in 2019, 2020, uh, in June, uh, which was uh, amazing. Um, it's amazing to see you all join us in Slack and on these monthly webinars and to hear about what you're doing and to see you all start to connect with each other and, and um, work together on projects. And I think actually some of what Kim is gonna, gonna talk about is a great example of cross-institutional collaboration that you can find through our community. Uh, we also launched our impact calculator that lets people sort of see the vision of, of what they could could change with OER in their classroom. We started our monthly webinars in December. We've been doing them every month. Attendance is awesome. Uh, we love seeing you guys here. And we launched our H5P studio in March as well, um, which uh, we're just frankly overwhelmed by uh, your interest in the, and uh, what you guys are doing with the H5P Studio. It's amazing. We had no, we knew people were like interested in H5P, but we didn't know how how interested they were. And culminating in March 2020, at the very end of our fiscal year, we finally did it: ten million dollars in student savings. Um, we could not be prouder. Um, so, um, with all of this energy from the past year, um, we're going into next year uh, with just just overwhelmed by, by everything that you guys are, are doing and with ideas for how to continue to do that work with you uh, and amplify the work that you're doing. 
So this year, what we want to do is take a moment and refresh, uh, try to harness all of that energy and bring it back in under that umbrella of well, what is open education. So um, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with that spark definition. Open education is resources, tools, and practices. And this year at eCampus Ontario, our focus is going to be on really bringing those resources, those tools, and those practices back under the umbrella of the open library and make the open library your one-stop shop for where you can find tools that you can have free access to, where you can connect with your community over, over open educational practices or, or finding support materials to do that, and where you can find all kinds of resources, not just textbooks, but syllabi, modules, courses, simulations, guides, videos, uh, other things. Um, so we'll be focusing on that library as at home for all of that activity. So you'll see some changes in the interface, um, but you'll also see that all sort of coming back together and, and making connections. And so we're gonna start by actively seeking your resources. Um, we had 80 new additions to the library last year. Uh, this year, we want way more than that. Um, so we're looking to expand our library, not only in, in terms of uh, the number of resources, but also the kinds of resources that we are collecting. We'll be starting with uh, a new collection development policy that we will make available uh, to you guys that lets us, you know exactly what we're collecting um, and how, how to get that into the library. And we'll also, instead of waiting for you to come to us with new books, um, we'll be coming to you to find those resources. So we'll be focusing on finding things that already exist, that you have created in Ontario, uh, and helping you get them into the library. This summer, we'll be working directly with teaching and learning centers and with libraries to help you identify the resources that you've created or that have been created at your institution that you want to share. And we'll help you apply those open licenses. Uh, we'll help you um, do the heavy lifting, and we'll upload that content into the library for you in large batches. Um, and we'll also be trying to provide regular updates on this project through our main communications channels like our Twitter account, but also through the newsletter, through these webinars, uh, through our Slack channel. So um, we're calling this our mediated deposit pilot, meaning that you're no longer coming directly to us with one item and depositing it. There's gonna be a mediator in between. And we're looking for those mediators right now. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Um, Jennifer, are, are you looking to access the, uh, uh, the notes? I'm just gonna put that link back in the chat. Um, and if that's still not working, please let me know and I'll fix it really soon. <laughs> okay, um, so you'll hear an update about this really soon. Um, we're just working at the, the final details, but we'll be coming to you, to any of you folks that work in libraries or teaching and learning centers, start gathering that stuff and thinking about um, how you might wanna uh, want to share it. Um, we cannot expand our collection if we don't make it easier to find that stuff. So um, that means improving our search with new facets and new filters, helping you find resources, not, you know, we don't have a material type filter in the library right now, um, but we will. Uh, we want you to be able to find resources um, by material type, filter by license, improve that metadata for all you librarians that are, that are here and, and listening. Uh, clean up that metadata um, and add more information about the resources that we have so that this becomes infinitely more accessible to you. All right. And finally, or not finally, in the middle of this, um, this is a community driven effort. Um, so we are going to be making community driven improvements to all of our products. Uh, so that uh, we're going to start with H5P Studio. Um, since the launch two months ago, we have over 550 users uh, creating H5P content, and all of them have really amazing ideas for how we could improve that experience. Um, so that means uh, having multiple authors be able to collaborate on the same H5P content. Um, so multi-author H5P 
yeah, ooh, ooh, Trisha. <laughs> um, that means um, being able to potentially uh, comment on items or contact directly the person who's created them. That means being able to add your Twitter pro uh, handle to your profile. Um, that means, uh, what else is on this, this list? Uh, being able to save a list of your favorite HIP items that you've found and come back to them later on. Um, and we want to hear more from you. Um, we will be surfacing that direct link uh, to H5P content. Um, and we want to hear from you about what you want in this tool. Um, it's brand new and it's ours and we get to keep building. So uh, let us know. We also really want to bring people together this year. Um, we want to make community uh, happen uh, more than we have been able to. And the library network is an amazing start. But we also recognize that there's sort of different needs for how that might happen. So um, we're looking at ways, uh, sort of unformed ways right now, to not only form a community of practice around OER, but for, to form forge these disciplinary connections uh, across institutions. We hear, especially with the current state of the world and with the need for online and digital resources that um, there's a need for us to work together a little bit more and we want to help make that happen. Um, we want to continue to facilitate communities of practice around OER work so people doing similar work with textbooks or similar work with um, other kinds of resources. We want to really um, harness the resources that teaching and learning centers are creating about open pedagogy and open practices and bring that together in, in a general resource hub for, for folks to find um, for folks to find the uh, the resources that they need to support them so that's guides to OER instructional design templates that kind of uh, thing that you guys are also creating alongside uh, your, your specific content uh, and we want to make a way for people to uh, find other people using the same resources that they are and exchange the extra stuff that they're creating. Um, so if we're all using the same textbook, let's exchange our slide decks, let's exchange our syllabi, um, let's learn from each other about how we're using this surface adoptions. Um, we want to make it easy for you to find someone like you uh, somewhere else uh, and, and connect with them and work um, together remotely at a social distance, but together. And um, this is actually our, our, our lastly. Uh, lastly, we want you to, we want to hear from you. Um, so very soon you will see calls for participation uh, to participate in a survey or a focus group or an interview about your experience with the open tools that we have. Um, we want to spend uh, the summer learning about what features you want so that we can roll out new features on a regular basis for the library, for HIP Studio, maybe for Pressbooks, depending on what your, your interest is. And so that we can continue um, to provide that support as much as, as, as we can. Um, so I imagine we'll have a, a survey. We're sort of co-designing this process right now <laughs> as we speak. Um, coming out soon please please subscribe to our newsletter to make sure that uh that you you get that information um and um you know contact us directly if you have ideas uh we're gonna do our best to gather as much information as we can so that we can prioritize the things that um we can we can do quickly that makes sense uh, uh, and that are going to help you in in the immediate as well as the long term <laughs> All right, and we're really just looking forward to an awesome year. That took much less time than than I thought it would. Um, so we're looking forward to an amazing year with with you guys. Um, and I'll, we can take any questions about the eCampus Ontario uh, activity. I know we're we're looking at pretty uh, broad strokes right right now, but these are sort of the categories that we're working in over the next year. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, ESL does need its own resources. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, pause for any comments or, or questions, and, and then I, I'm going to, you know, we can't do this without you, so we'll hand it over uh, to, to someone else to tell us what, what they're up to. 
Is that my cue to go? Um, <laughs> we could we could take a minute um, for any uh, uh, for questions. questions. So uh, thanks. So Audrey, at EC, do you expect any funding available this year to create uh, new resources? So you won't see funding calls like we have done in in the past. So earlier we've done fun big funding calls for, for broad general categories. Uh, anyone that has an open idea, um, that's not scalable right now. So we're really focusing on where we can have the most impact with our, our funding. So you'll see different kinds of calls uh, or expressions of interest for more specific or scalable projects. Okay, thanks. Um, and yeah, I see we've got ESL needs its own resources, more categories for H5P Studio, <laughs> a variety of resources. Cool, I, oh, so many great ideas. There's so many great ideas in here. Any other questions about what ECO is up to, campus is up to? Maybe Lillian, just a quick comment from me. Uh, this is Michelle, um, CTO at eCampus Ontario. I'd like to thank Emily, uh, Lillian, sorry, I always mix up the Emily and Lillian. Thanks, Lillian, for her hard work. I mean, it's really brilliant work that she's been doing, building the community and kind of driving the open message at eCampus Ontario, especially in, our, in the IT group. And I want to also reemphasize the commitment of the IT group to build solutions that are driven by you, the users, the community. Um, we are really responsive. Uh, Lillian can talk about that. When we see issues or see problems, we're hard at work trying to fix them and uh, always continuously improve these features. So your voice is, is really heard and, and um, want to also take the opportunity to thank you again, Lillian, for your all hard, oh, your hard thanks, work. Thanks, Michelle. And I see a question from Jennifer in the Q&A. Um, people are wondering how long H5P Studio will last. They're worried about investing time and energy into something and then having it um, disappear. And I think that's really important to know. It's not going anywhere. Um, so um, I should note that when we provide something through the open library, our goal is to provide it perpetually um, without an end date. We have an educational technology sandbox where we have like time limited opportunities. Uh, anything that we're putting under the open library is part of our service portfolio and you would get a lot of uh, time to know if, if it was gonna go away. Um, we, would, <laughs> we, would, we would not want it to go away. I don't, we have no plans to stop service with Pressbooks or H5P Studio, and we have lots of plans to expand service with Pressbooks and H5P Studio. Um, so if you find it on our library website, or if you don't find it in the technology sandbox, it's a, it's a permanent part of our, our portfolio. Uh, and we don't have a, H5P Studio specifically is, we're running the open source version, so um, we don't have a contract uh, or with H5P. Um, so it's really all in our hands as to, to keeping it up and running. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Jess says, I'd love to contribute to the studio, but I'm lacking a clear process for openly licensing content within my college. I feel my hands are pretty tied unless I contribute stuff I build outside of my job role. Have any colleges moved an open licensing process forward that anyone is aware of? That's a really great uh, point from Jess and Jess <laughs> and Brandon. Um, yeah, so we can't do a lot about your, your contracts at your colleges, but um, if that's an area where, you know, we feel uh, you feel like eCampus Ontario might be able to, to play a role in stimulating those conversations, um, you know, please let us know. And that's something, you know, we can consider uh, is engaging with, with your colleges uh, and, and, you know, trying to get a community of practice around what it means for college employees to deposit uh, openly licensed resources somewhere. Um, Trisha, I can't really speak to LinkedIn in learning. Will access remain after September? Because it's not part of my portfolio. I don't know if Michelle can or if I'm putting him on the, in, on the spot. There's not a lot of news um, on that front. I mean, the negotiations are still happening at the government level. Um, but there's, there's no update um, at this point in time. Cool. Um, Cool, and Jennifer, thank you for, College Libraries Ontario has just developed a policy 
uh, for that and they're releasing all their content under CC BY and C. So perhaps that's something that we can, can learn from or maybe even host a future webinar on. And if there's a topic you wanna see covered in a future webinar, like how to negotiate that licensing conversation um, or like folks that have negotiated that licensing conversation, we would love to, to hear from it. Oh, thank you, Lena. All right, I don't wanna to take too much of your time. I really think it's important that we also hear uh, from the wonderful folks up above that are um, working on uh, local initiatives or cross-institutional initiatives. Um, so you can hear, the, uh, Jocelyn is gonna start us by, by getting, um, get, telling us a little bit about what's going on with her and hopefully you'll get an idea for, for different ways that you might be able to start some of your own open work this year. And that is your cue, Jessalyn. That is my cue. Yeah. I was waiting for it. I was like, ah, missed the button on the last one. My son made, made sure that I knew that he was finished his lunch, so I was a little distracted. Right. So <laughs> hi everyone, my name is Jessalyn Wilkinson and I'm uh, in our teaching and learning center over at Conestoga College in Kitchener, Waterloo. Um, and Kim had actually suggested that I stop in today to talk about um, some of the work that we're doing to try and facilitate openness among our faculty at the college. Um, and so about a year ago, um, I took the initiative to build an, uh, uh, an internal team in Microsoft Teams uh, focused on technology enabled learning for our faculty. So I called it the Tech for Teaching team. And I kind of cheated a little bit at the end. At the beginning, I, I invited everybody who participated in our annual Tech for Teaching Day to join that group. Um, and in there, we host conversations and facilitate conversations around, you know, what tech tools are you using? How are you using them? And that little kind of community of 80 has grown in the last year from 80 faculty participants to well over 230 at this point. Um, and we have a fairly active community in, in Tech for Teaching uh, in the team group. We opted to go with something like Microsoft Teams because uh, we were noticing that a lot of faculty felt cautious about engaging in social media in a professional context. And they weren't too sure yet what that might look like for them or what platforms were best for them. But they did feel really comfortable engaging in an internal sort of environment, especially one that feels as like dynamic as something like Slack or Teams. So we built the team. We started out with 80 participants. And honestly, it was slow going at first. It was really just me posting, you know, some regular updates and just trying to engage people in a variety of ways. Uh, but it has blown up over the last year. Uh, I invite people who attend my workshops, and my workshops are all tech related, uh, tech and pedagogy related. I invite people who attend our workshops to join the team and they often voluntarily sign up. They refer their friends in and now we have sort of this community of, of well over half of our full-time faculty base um, just sharing ideas, troubleshooting with each other, there are no um, administrators in the group. It's only faculty and any su key support staff roles. So we have some, some support staff who are really technology enabled and we have them in there contributing ideas. But it's not up to our support staff to initiate conversations. It's up to our faculty to initiate conversations. And it's at the point now where, where they'll post call-ins, they post fantastic conversations, troubleshoot with each other and share with each other. And so while it's not an open community in the sense of uh, open to the broader global community, it is an open community of, of educators sharing their practice and sharing their ideas and being willing to experiment and support each other. Um, so I hope that that might be food for thought for anybody who's looking at Teams or Slack in ways that you might incorporate that into, into building communities for your faculty. Sorry, my son's telling me I need to uh, restart Netflix for him. <laughs> no worries, Jessalyn. Thank you so much. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> OK. 
Kim, can I put you on? Oh, there you're back, Jess. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, are we fielding questions? I'm so sorry, I had to just run away that's, right there. That's totally <laughs> that was so inconvenient. For all like teachers and, and, and parents, and you know housekeepers and chefs and stuff now so um, <laughs> I totally understand and tech support at, at home yeah. um yeah. we can we could field uh any questions that we have about the work that that, that you're uh doing now either in the chat or in the Q&A or um uh you know we can I really appreciate you of your time and it sounds really interesting this like internal twitter <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's internal Twitter. Internal yeah. Twitter. Kim called it internal Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no or hashtags just yet, but we're yeah. working on it. I love it, and I I was gonna put Kim on the spot and ask about uh, her experience participating in your in this community. Yeah, I nice. think it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, there's, I see there's quite a few Conestoga faculty in the chat, so I'm sure that they could jump in because all of their names I have seen in Tech for Teaching. Um, I think it's a great place to also share or plant seeds of openness uh, because we can say, hey, have you, for instance, H5P was one that I think uh, we were able to sort of say, hey, this is what I'm doing with it. And then now we, uh, Jesslyn was able to create a channel and now we have lots of chatting around H5P and we were able to introduce the eCampus H5P studio. So I think like lots of really great things come from that. And I'd tell you during that remote switch when we had like a week to switch over, people were making little videos to help each other out and they were like, this isn't working, what should I do? And like, I think that that was awesome that we were able to support each other that way as well as all the um, institutional supports we had. Yeah, it was really interesting how um, pivotal that team became when everyone was in our flip week. So Conestoga allocated a week towards prepping for the pivot to, to remote. And in that week, I have never been inundated with so many messages in my life. I had to like turn off the ability for people to call me into conversations and just like sort of, I, I did have to, you know, I was inundated on a lot of fronts on that week. And, and I was so surprised and excited to see the way that the faculty and the team really started supporting each other and just saying, I tried this, here's a link, like just go for it. Um, and we really have a kind of a culture built in that community that that experimentation is just going to be key. And that culture, I think, was already really there for those those groups. Um, and, and Kim and I both co-facilitate that team at this moment in time. I appreciate her help uh, with that out with that. And I do use it as an opportunity to kind of promote those key target initiatives. You know, what does open, what are the open tools that are out there? What is free and widely available? What's beyond the LMS? Um, and so uh, it is about planting seeds and it is about, uh, it is also about supporting faculty wherever they're at and with whatever it is that they need. Um, and it's, it's not, it's starting to become something that, uh, you know, we as a teaching and learning center don't really have to manage it. It's a community that lives on its own. And our, our goals for the future are to look to ways that we might help that community become self-sustaining and self-regulating on a, on a broader basis, tapping into some faculty leaders and supporting them and deciding what this community should look like for them. I love that. Awesome. All right. Um, so keep on thinking about ideas, questions, and whatever. But what I'm going to do is pass this on to Olga next, who's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on at um, McMaster or what she's up to. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Lillian. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Olga Perkovic, uh, Research and Advanced Studies Librarian at McMaster University. Um, about two years ago, uh, my colleague Joanne Kehoe um, from the Teaching and Learning Center at McMaster uh, started a grassroots um, OER committee, um, work, well, working group, and now it's a committee. Um, and we um, worked through small projects through the two years, and then finally we've 
sought funding for an OER grant, and I'm pleased to report that the McMaster OER grant uh, was launched this past Thursday, May 7th. So yay! <laughs> Finally, it was a lot of work. I uh, had a lot of moving pieces. A lot of people were involved. Uh, we had the OER committee members um, working at the, on the documents. Um, and so we used um, promotional materials. Uh, there was an article in the Daily News, which got a lot of uh, retweets and reshares. Uh, we're actually doing email blasts to each faculty member as well about the, the grant and using social media. So what it consists of, it's a three-year uh, pilot from 2020 to 2023 in the amount of $16,000 per year for the next three years. Uh, the funds are donated by the McPherson Institute, um, the Office of the Provost, and the University Libraries. And the University Library is administering the funds. Um, so applicants may apply for a selection of three grants and one peer review honorarium at $250. The other amounts are a creation grant worth $7,500 each, an adaptation grant worth $2,500 each, and an adoption grant worth $1,000 each. Um, so we scheduled two virtual drop-in sessions for instructors and one Pressbook uh, virtual workshop that will be recorded. As of today, I think there are about 12 uh, faculty registered, so that's a promising sign. Um, we have submissions open until June 1st, um, so they have almost uh, four weeks to apply. Um, should we get few or we don't fill the amount, we're going to relaunch the grant in the fall term um, or until um, all the grants have been allocated. Um, we are taking a subset of the McMaster OER committee to evaluate the, the submissions and award the grants. And then um, Joanne and I are going to kind of build a support structure for the faculty. Um, as part of the supplementary materials, I looked at uh, several uh, sites that already have a grant and really focus on the KPU grant and the um, UPEI OER grant that was recently launched in January of this year. And they had some really good documents, so I adapted um, their uh, final report document and their planning template. Um, because I think the feedback that I received from people who had looked at the materials before they were launched uh, suggested that some kind of planning document was required. So I modified those and gave proper accreditation. And um, we also created an email account, uh, OER email account, um, which I check daily and <laughs> Joanne and I get those messages. All of this information is on our LibGuide instead of our webpage. Um, so I created an OER LibGuide um, about two years ago and I created a subset called OER um, grants and it's libguides.mcmaster.ca slash OER slash grant. Um, I'll put that in the chat later. Um, so again there's three five pages of content there and links to the supplementary documents and um, and we're just waiting now to see what I what applications we get at the end of um, the month. And um, so I'm really excited about it. It was a lot of work and, um, and you know, we just basically went out and asked for money. <laughs> um, so if anyone's wondering how it all came about, like there re you do reach a point where you need to get something um, solid in place. And so I just asked and then things rolled into place and um, a lot of things, uh, parts came together and it's done. So I just wanted you to know that um, our materials are out there. They're also, you're welcome to use any of the materials that we've put out there and um, I'll keep you posted on, on what happens at McMaster. I really don't know about the environmental, like I don't know about the environment, but I think this is really a, a, t a good time to launch a grant when uh, faculty are looking at, um, you know, changing their more modifying their courses to online work. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be actually a lot of adaptations or adoptions. Uh, that's what we're expecting for the fall term, um, where there's a really short time frame to actually uh, use material, you know, move course materials online. So I think this might be enticing to to some sessional fact, faculty or um, we'll see what happens, but I'll keep you posted. And I wanted to share that news. Thanks. Thank you so much, Olga. I, I see a lot of great comments in the in the chat. Oh, thank you. 
Um, and a lot of, I've also seen a lot of really wonderful feedback on social media about your report and we can't wait to, or about your uh, call for, for uh, your grants and can't wait to see um, what, com what comes out of it. I'm sure you'll have more takers than you can possibly. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and um, you know, if there's any, if I know that there are other institutions that have OER grants, and if there is any interest in, in us sort of generating a little bit of a community uh, around folks that are managing granting programs or interested in starting granting programs, please um, let us know. I'm sure you can all learn a lot from your shared uh, experiences. Yeah, it would be great to know how to start a, a granting program. So perhaps we can start um, either run a future webinar uh, on that topic a, a little bit more, um, or we can start a channel uh, in our in our Slack, a thread in our Slack about um, uh, people that are interested in OER grants. Thanks so much, everyone. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and Jennifer saying that she just they just awarded their third round at, at Seneca. Um, I know at, at, at Melanie. I know at, at Ottawa. You guys are starting as well. So um, this is awesome. Okay, um, and we'll pass it on to Kim and her main me, <laughs> Marie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that you introduced it that way. <laughs> um, so Marie and I are in the midst, actually we're nearing the end of the curation phase of our medical terminology open educational resources. Um, it started a while back, but really gained some traction this fall. We've had, uh, I've, we've both had institutional support, I'll let Marie speak for her own, but my executive dean has been very supportive with uh, time on my SWIFT, and we had intended to have a sprint um, that Justin has kept asking for, <laughs> when are you going to have a sprint? <laughs> so she put that bug on that ear, and um, we were to have a sprint at the end of April, but of course we had to cancel it. And we also had to put on pause some of our ancillary resources, but I'm like so happy to report that in spite of everything that happened, I still have eight institutions in Ontario involved in curating material, creating H5P content. Um, and it's just been amazing because I, as you know, it's been a kind of a rough go and people have also had personal as well as professional changes and uh, we're on task, hopefully to publish in August, phase one. And our phase two will be our ancillary resources, the things we would have done at the sprint. And so I'm really kind of excited about the initiatives that you talked about, Lillian, because maybe there would be a way of um, crowdsourcing that <laughs> through the year and to kind of be ready to go. Um, we're sort of crowdsourcing right now because as we, I have a soft deadline of May 15th for curation. And so now it's sort of been, okay, we still need this, who can do it? We still need, you know, whatever this um, case may be. And so Marie, my main me, because she's been there pretty much since that took off in November, uh, has been working really uh, diligently with co-construction with students. So we have um, students from Georgian and Conestoga uh, working on some H5P activities and they really like it. So I'm gonna like pass the baton on to Marie <laughs> to talk about that. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, if I can thank you as much as I possibly can for inviting me into the project. It's been a wonderful collaboration and, and trusting me to support that has been wonderful. As Kim mentioned, um, we have it. Actually, my name's Marie Rutherford. I'm from Georgian College. I'm faculty uh, for 20 years, so I've been long time serving. And the movement to OER has been an interesting process for me personally. But I want to just touch upon the project from the side of the students. We decided that as we came together, there would be a great opportunity to invite students to participate in the activity. So we had two students from Georgian participate in the co-construction process. We invited the participation more on the development side of the interactive activities using the H5P tools that we have available for us in Pressbook. And the opportunity to have content for learners developed by learners was just so appealing and so exciting for us. Our learners participated in this creative partnership, which I think in, enriched our outcomes, our deliverables, but also their experience as well. Students expanded their knowledge, their existing knowledge base. They were students that from Georgian were completing their program in the final semester when they started participating in this activity. And it was interesting to see them look at the resource through the lens of a learner perspective. 
as we get involved as subject matter experts, sometimes there's a tendency to maybe lose some of that focus. And, and just experiencing the meetings and the communication streams and the practices, I think enhanced our student experience as well. Some of the takeaways that from this project that I, that I found, which were really relevant that I'd like to share is Position the project early, if at all, if you're considering doing an OER project, do it as early as possible. Identify the who, what, where, how, and when. Secure the support from a variety of mechanisms that you have available to you. Include your learners in that support mechanism process. I, in fact, introduced the project to my students in the fall and just had a conversation around what would this look like, and it really stirred up the interest in why I had the two students who came forward to participate and consider inviting learners into the process. I, I think it has so much value and so much opportunity for us to further develop. Those are my two cents. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just loving seeing all of these, these uh, comments and hearing about um, this great, the fact that you were able to get eight institutions working together um, and the impact that that's going to have is is amazing. I think we have all have a lot that we can um, that we can learn from from your process, Kim, and from and and Marie, and from just your like sheer gumption and interest in making this happen, and then perseverance at making it it happen. Um, and it's just a great example of how we can connect folks. Um, I any think like. That sort of important piece to that is that we all teach in a similar program. So we sort we had this common theme that we never have a textbook that works well for us, right? We're a little bit business and we're a little bit health. So we're always modifying paid textbooks anyway. So we had this common, it was easy to get other institutions on board because we had the common problem of students not buying the textbooks and the common problem of we never had a textbook that fit perfectly. So now we got to like divide our not perfect but somewhat perfect open educational resources because lena patterson told me and i told her i was going to use this uh, perfection is the death of oer so it's not perfect it's just pretty good it is yeah. <laughs> that's a great quote well, lena had to leave us but I, that's a that's a perfect lena patterson quote right there <laughs> Right. And the relationships that have developed from that have been long serving and they'll extend well beyond this particular project and the cross collaboration. I can't speak for how mind opening it has been. I'm not sure that's the correct word, but it really has been to look at a different perspective and just to find out what other people are doing at other institutions and other OER projects that are in the works. It's just so exciting. That's awesome. So um, we have about five minutes uh, uh, re remaining. Um, if anyone wants to use the raise hand button, if they want to contribute like, you know, 15 to 35 seconds about what they're doing uh, this year, we'd love to hear from you spontaneously. Um, okay, uh, and I can, can, can read, I've got Brandon's doing data collection for his thesis on OER focusing on college business faculty. Um, and he's shared uh, the, the survey um, in, the, in the chat there. So if you are at Ontario College Business Faculty and you have time to complete a survey and help on, uh, Brandon out with his research, that would be uh, fantastic. And if there's anyone else um, doing some stuff, I've heard some great stuff coming from, from Jennifer throughout this uh, about what's going on at, um, oh, thank you. Uh, what's going on for with uh, with Seneca? Jess uh, O'Reilly at Cambrian is working on a proposal for her dissertation on OER enabled pedagogy. I can't wait to read that. You know, whenever your dissertation is done, uh, and I can't wait to to hear what else is going on. Uh, anyone else want to share what they're what they're up to? I'm I can unmute you. All right, uh, so then I have the, the pleasure of doing the little wrap up here. If you'll uh, stick with me. Um, 
we have our, our next webinar is on June 9th, 2020. We don't have a topic for it, although I have a lot of ideas from uh, this um, from this session. Um, if you do have a topic in mind, if there's something you want to talk about, um, really our goal is to feature members of this community. So um, we'd we'd love uh, we'd love to hear. Uh, from from you. Um, after this webinar is over, you'll be taken to a brief survey about uh, your experience today. There's also a free comment field where you can include that. And then just keep an eye out. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter. If you're in our Slack, we'll send out the link to this recording pretty soon. Um, and get in touch with us if there's anything that we can do to support you um, as, as you move through the next year um, as we see open education becoming more interesting and more important and um, just wider spread throughout the province. Um, you know, we're here for if anything from a technical question about HIP Studio, which are helping facilitate a sprint or a Pressbooks training or um, anything in between or, or building something new. Um, get, in, get in touch. Um, yeah. and. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and end our recording. Thank you all so much. Um, and we'll see you in the in the Slack. And, and thank you, Kim and Marie and Olga and Jacqueline and um, you know, Lena and Michelle who are, are not here anymore and everybody that, that participated in, in our chat today.